Welcome back to Noir Alley. I'm your host, Eddie Muller. Today we're going to celebrate the birthday of writer-director Richard Brooks by taking a vacation in the Florida Keys. Only this is no pleasure trip. We're going to be held hostage by gangsters in a rickety old hotel as a hurricane heads straight for us. That's the setup for today's film, 1948's Key Largo, scripted by Richard Brooks and directed by John Huston for Warner Brothers. The picture is famous for being the last of four films to star Humphrey Bogart and his bride, Lauren Bacall. It's also notable for earning Claire Trevor an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress for her memorable portrayal of sodden songbird Gay Dawn, a one-time chanteuse, now the mall of gangster Johnny Rocco, played to a fare thee well by the great Edward G. Robinson. Now listen, I don't want any trouble. With you? With anybody. After soaring to stardom in the 1930s as Little Caesar, Robinson changed up his image in the film noir era, where in pictures like The Woman in the Window, Scarlet Street, The Red House, and Night Has a Thousand Eyes, he played middle-aged men tortured by failure and regret. But here he reverts to type, pulling out all the stops to give Little Caesar a grand encore. At this point in his career, Former newspaper man Richard Brooks, born in Philadelphia in 1912 as Reuben Sachs, was an up-and-coming screenwriter. His first film as a Hollywood director was still a couple of years off. Brooks had two mentors in Hollywood, newspaper man turned producer Mark Hellinger, for whom he'd written the scripts The Killers and Brute Force, and John Huston, with whom he'd collaborated on the screenplay of The Killers. Houston had been working in Hollywood since the early 30s, so he treated Brooks like his protege, even though there was only a six-year age difference between the two. Houston invited Brooks to Key Largo, Florida, to help him adapt Maxwell Anderson's 1939 play into a vehicle for Bogart and Bacall. Now, in truth, Brooks did the yeoman's share of the work. Houston spent most of his time fishing during the day and gambling the night away in the casino of the Largo Hotel. Brooks would later say that, thanks to Houston's influence, he dropped at the gaming tables more than he was paid to work on the script. Now, even without the drinking and gambling, adapting the play was no easy chore. On stage, the first half of Key Largo takes place in the hills of Andalusia during the Spanish Civil War, as American soldiers in the Lincoln Brigade, fighting against the forces of Generalissimo Francisco Franco, engage in long existential discussions about life and war and the necessity of battling totalitarian regimes. Now, one of these soldiers deserts his comrades to reappear in the play's second act in Key Largo, where he seeks forgiveness from the fiancé of a comrade he left for dead in Spain. And yes, there is a gangster, based on Lucky Luciano, who figures in the destiny of the guilt-ridden soldier. Houston abandoned the play's entire first act, and updated the second half to contemporary post-World War II America. Bogart's Frank McLeod is now a valiant but cynical war veteran visiting his fallen comrade's wife out of a sense of duty. She runs a ramshackle hotel with her crippled father-in-law, played by Lionel Barrymore. Houston wanted to tone down the politics from the play, but Brooks, who always had his finger on topical hot buttons, preserved the anti-fascist thrust of the story, making Johnny Rocco a symbolic stand-in for strong-armed dictators who lord it over common, hard-working people. Now, although the script was drafted in Key Largo with some filming done there, all the interiors were shot on sets at the Warner Studio in Burbank. Now, Brooks may have gambled away the dough he made writing the picture, but he'd gain invaluable experience when Houston, who knew his protege was eager to direct, allowed him to stay on set for the entire production, a luxury rarely afforded writers, then or now. Featuring terrific camera work by the great German cinematographer Karl Freund with a score by Max Steiner, here is the fourth and final film in the Bogart Bacall Quartet, one many feel is the best of the bunch. From John Huston and Richard Brooks, who would have been 107 years old today, here is Key Largo. <laughs> 